flare spurting out from Mars. Bright green, drawing a green mist behind it. A beautiful, but somehow disturbing sight. Ogilvy assured me we were in no danger. Perhaps a huge volcanic explosion was in progress. But he was convinced there could be no living thing on that remote, forbidding planet.
common, hypnotized by the unscrewing of the cylinder. Two feet of shining screw projected, when suddenly, the lid fell off. Two humorous, disc-like eyes appeared above the rim. A huge round of buck, larger than a bear, rose up, slowly, glistening like wet leather. Its lipless mouth quivered and slathered, and snake-like tentacles writhed as the clumsy body heaved and pulsated.
facing again. Yet around me, the daily routine of life, working, eating, sleeping, was continuing serenely as it had for countless years. <laughs>
sight the group was slain, splashed to the four winds, and the body, nothing now but an intricate device of metal, went whirling to destruction. As the other monsters advanced, people ran away blindly, the artillerymen among them. But I jumped into the water.
went from house to house. The population panicked and ran, and I was swept along with them, aimless and lost without carry. Finally, I headed eastward for the ocean, and my only hope of survival, a boat out of England. Like the sun. Keep 
and began to move slowly away. But on the landward horizon appeared the unmistakable silhouette of a flying machine. Another cable, and another, spraying over hills and trees, plucking far out to sea, blocking the exit of the steamer. Between them lay the silent grey ironclad thunder child. Slowly it moved toward shore, then with a deafening roar and whoosh of spray, it swung about and drove at full speed towards the waiting marshes. Thank you.